Feed the birds. Tuppence a bag. Tuppence. Tuppence. Tuppence a bag. With this simple yet insistent refrain, a marginalized figure steps towards us and demands our attention. She exists at a time of rapacious capitalist expansion and subjugation, a pitiless early 20th century milieu in which the fault lines of the money system are already yawning open. Elsewhere, in Mary Poppins, of course, we will encounter other casualties of the era. The brutally exploited chimney sweeper, for instance, whose defense against psychological annihilation lies in his cheerily asserted humanity and, above all, in his transcendent imagination. I does what I likes and I likes what I do. Hello, art lovers. The suffragette who defies patriarchal oppression and by extension its systematization of financial injustice. And even the children's own father, whose devotion to the bank, what else, has in time permeated his very identity and almost consumed it entirely. But on this occasion, I will speak of the old woman who feeds the birds. To spend tuppence and feed the birds can be interpreted as an act of resistance. Imagine it. You pause for a moment on a busy metropolitan thoroughfare. You step aside from the crowd and its constant motion. You interrupt the flow and you hear the half-muttered, blustering complaints from those who continue to stride onward to who knows where. Your destination, you have decided, is perhaps not so compelling after all. You have chosen differently. You have turned away from the others. And in doing so, you have enacted a small yet significant intervention against the processes of alienation and commodification which envelop everyone and everything around you. The woman herself is the money-grubbing capitalist's worst nightmare. She is the living embodiment of age, poverty, failure. Her meagre occupation lacks status, and moreover, she is the wrong gender. Her activity will not generate immense profit for Molo. Molo, Molo. She is unlikely to enrich either herself or the nation. She is more likely to be in need of charity. She is nearly invisible to the purposeful men who walk past her, their shuttered minds sunk in the inexpressibly quotidian affairs of business. And in this sense, she performs a similarly transgressive function to that of an earlier critic of our collective and persistent delusions. I refer to the revenant or revolutionary we will discover in the lines of William Blake's London. I wander through each chartered street, near where the chartered Thames does flow, and mark in every face I meet marks of weakness, marks of woe. In every cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every voice, in every ban, the mind-forged manacles I hear. It is important to note that the visionary here is one who wanders, free from the constraints of a chartered London. For this carefully chosen term simultaneously denotes the ownership and regimentation of territory, both key assault techniques in the private usurpation of public space. Even the symbol of the natural world, the mighty Thames itself, has been co-opted and controlled. However, our guide to this city does not recognize these limitations but roams instead at liberty with a mind which pierces the capitalist lie and apprehends the squalid realities of a universal suffering and misery beneath it. The famous mind-forged manacles signal that this lamentable predicament is further reinforced by a self-defeating mental outlook 
which colludes in the capitulation, a conditioned state of mind which we may with some justification rephrase as false consciousness. In much the same way, the old woman, a ragged and no doubt somewhat pitiable presence, drifts through the winding streets and calls to those who, having built their labyrinth, are now hopelessly lost within it. She does this to reconnect them with values which stand in opposition to a society which is preoccupied with heedless, exploitative greed and all its associated evils. And this is her offer. For tuppence, you can step out of the urban insanity and enter a world which, if not exactly an Arcadia, is at least slower, kinder, and more peaceful. The money you part with, to a very minor character in the film, it merely represents the beginnings of an investment, could be used for possibilities which can only be described as proto-environmentalist. For who knows what might be accomplished once we make that final revolt from the monolith. Beneath the pavement, the beach. And her refrain continues to resonate. Feed the birds. She may as well be shouting, you have nothing to lose but your chains. Or perhaps, liberty or death. Or, more pungently, occupy the reality studio and retake their world of fear, death and monopoly. Feed the birds. Even today, indeed, especially today, it is an urgent imperative. We ignore it at our peril. <laughs>